And Kira, nothing makes a good tabloid headline like a star losing their cool. Some of our favorites from the world of sports, the chair throwing college basketball coach Bobby Knight, another all star Serena Williams and her F-bomb lace tirade with the line judge at the U.S. Open. Yeah, and also in the fashion world, of course, Naomi Campbell has been accused more than once of using her cell phone as a weapon. And on Capitol Hill this week, we actually saw outgoing Congressman Patrick Kennedy taking shot at uh, taking a shot at the media for coverage of a Afghanistan. There. Oh yeah, he was he was shouting and gesturing, and he he got himself worked up into a lather about the situation. But now. Is this just moments of anger from these people, or is there actually a medical reason behind anger? Here for an AM house call this morning is Dr. Emil Kakaro. He is head of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Neuroscience at the University of Chicago. Thanks for being with us this morning. Glad to be here. All right, so we showed some of those um, outbursts, the, you know, the, the classic road rage, airline rage, uh, some of the things that we hear a lot about. Is rage really part of our social culture? Has this been a problem all along? Well, anger and rage is a normal emotion. So you're going to see it in people from time to time. The question is, is it too frequent and does it get you into trouble? And what's a normal anger response? I mean, there's something called intermittent explosive disorder. I had not heard this before, uh, but it's, uh, it's something that you're familiar with in your field. Yes, intermittent explosive disorder or something like it has actually been in the DSM since the very beginning. Uh, and really what it characterizes are people who are blowing up very frequently and who get into trouble because of it. Like so an IED, it doesn't right? really cover the... Yeah, like an IED. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I and mean, the DSM-5 may change the name of it, actually. Is that right? And, and I mean, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where, I mean, obviously we should all have a normal response, and then there's the, the normal response that, that uh, I mean, the, the, the abnormal response. I mean, there, there are obviously two different types of responses. Yeah, how do you gauge what's a problem? And, uh, you know, in, in some instances, I mean, isn't it about what's socially acceptable as well? I mean, people, you know, I I is there an element of uh, society accepting bad behavior, anger more readily than, let's say, decades ago? I don't know. It really depends on how public it is to some degree. But it, it really depends on how often it happens and the context in which it happens. So if you're in a high-stress sort of environment, uh, people will give will cut you slack for you know, having some outbursts, but even there, if you have them too often, it really you know interferes with work or uh, interpersonal relations. It's going to be a problem for somebody. But you know, blowing up occasionally is okay. It's normal. I mean, really, what you have is a situation of a threshold to explode, and then you've got sort of the, the floor, you know, where you sort of start out in the day. And uh, if your threshold is low, you don't need a whole lot of the stresses and strains to get you over that threshold. And so what happens is people. Have, a, have had a terrible day, and then something happens that sort of breaks the camel's back, and they just they reach that threshold and explode. Now, normal people have a very high threshold, and so you need a lot of stuff to get them to get over that threshold. So you, you can see it in anyway, but the people who have a problem with this have a low threshold and often are sort of predisposed to overreacting when something happens that would irritate anybody. And so what, uh, how do you treat that? I mean, if somebody actually goes to talk to somebody and they find out that they indeed do have an anger disorder, what's the next step? Well, first off, there's, uh, there's a biology, genetics, and a neuroscience to these kinds of problems. So certainly they can be treated. They can be treated with a specialized form of psychotherapy called cognitive behavioral therapy. And they can be treated by certain medications such as Prozac-like drugs. And what the Prozac-like drugs do is they, low, they increase the threshold to explode. And what the cognitive behavioral therapy does is it helps you deal with what's in the moment so you can have other options about how to respond to something that might irritate you. This is interesting. There was a quiz uh, that, that uh, was linked to, on our blog. And we took, it was, an, it was sort of an anger quiz. You had to answer some of the questions. For example, your car stalled in traffic. The person behind you keeps blowing his horn. And they sort of had a list of, are you mildly irritated, not irritated at all, moderately irritated, extremely upset, or, you know, very, very upset. And uh, Jim and I answered these. Uh, another one is being overcharged by a repair person. I believe the words were, who has you over a barrel? Um, and then the last one mm -hmm. was, somebody makes a mistake and blames it on you. And Jim and I took all of these. Mm -hmm. and we, t t surprisingly you, enough, turned out to be <laughs> relatively peaceful. <laughs> the good doctor um, wants okay. to know how we scored. <laughs> And, and uh, this was an anger management, not anger I took it, management. Exactly. I took it, too. You right. took it, too? What did you get? I got a 57. I took it, too. 57 I out of 100. Well, I got an 18, but I think uh, it's... 18? Uh, my goodness. You're, you're I got an 18, but I got to tell you, my wife didn't think I got an 18, but... Uh, <laughs> Were you conscious when you took this quiz? Um, 
I was conscious when I took the quiz. The problem is I was very peaceful when I took the quiz, and it really does depend on what state you're in. So, I mean, if I am, I'll give you an example. Like six, five, five years ago, there was an article that came out. It got a lot of publicity. I was on lots of talk shows. And that evening, I was in my parking lot at the hospital, and somebody was blocking me from getting out, and they were screaming mm -hmm. at me because I was trying to get through. And I just sat there drumming my fingers on the, on the driving wheel because I thought all I need to have happen is me to have an explosion so the papers would be the next day. Anger doc explodes in hospital parking lot. So I knew I couldn't so, do see, that. There so you I go. have to so be a little were, more you controlled. Would, you were letting your mind rule, not your uh, emotions there. Jim, by the way, I was letting my mind rule, right. He got a 51. I got but a that's 51. That's normal. And, but the other interesting thing about it is it was sort of broken down. I found uh, the things that made Jim angry, uh, like you got upset at one of the questions about you accidentally got a stain on your shirt or you yes. ripped your pants. Uh, that you happens stepped a lot. In gum. Me, yeah. um, that type of stuff, I don't get, didn't get angry about. The thing I got most angry about was having to do with driving, like people honking at you or telling you where'd you learn how to drive. So it, it seems that every right. individual has different triggers. Is it just a matter of figuring out what makes you mad and trying to be more aware of it? And having fewer yeah, triggers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of what happens. Well, that's part of what happens in the cognitive behavioral therapy. You identify what the triggers are, and everybody has their own psychology. My own trigger is somebody treating me as if I'm, I'm not important and uh, I'm not worth their time. So that's one that gets me triggered. But uh, a lot of the situations that they measured don't generally get me that upset. But again, it depends on, you know, what state you're in. If you're kind of, you know, frazzled that day, you know, being behind somebody who's not moving in traffic. Is, well, Dr. Kokaro, this was well worth our upset. time, and, and we appreciate it very much. You are important, and we do appreciate your time. And plus, our producer <laughs> said if we don't wrap this up, he's going to blow, so I can't yep. risk and, that. And you don't want that. Okay. Uh, 87, so. <laughs> right. Uh, by the way, if people want to take the quiz, it's at cnn.com slash amfix. Dr. Ramil Kokaro, great to have you on the show this morning. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. Avoid the gum, and I'll, and I'll take taxes. Uh, yes, exactly. 38 minutes past <laughs> the hour.